Welcome to another edition of the Motorcycle Mayhem Radio Podcast, hosted by Johnny Rizzo, where we talk about everything motorcycle, from tips on safe riding, to apparel and accessories, to where the next events are, and everything in between. So, let's mount up and ride. Hey, Johnny, where are we going this time? What's up, everybody? I am Johnny Rizzo, and you're listening to the Motorcycle Mayhem Radio Podcast. And I got a great guest for you guys today, Mark the Animal Mendoza from Twisted Sister, also a big motorcycle guy. Got to love it, right? Absolutely. So what's up, Mark? How you doing? Hey, Johnny, thanks for having me on with you today. You know, it's uh, most of the interviews and things that I discuss is usually with music. Yes, it you is. You know, playing bass, you know, producing and, you know, Twisted Sister and everything else that I play. So w- once in a while, I get to talk about other subjects. That's right. And one of my favorite subjects motorcycles. is motorcycle and motorcycle riding. There you go. But before we get into that, I want to congratulate you being a, the Heavy Metal Hall of Fame. Yes, yes. Twisted Sister got inducted into the Heavy Metal Hall of Fame uh, about a week ago, week and a half ago out in California. How'd that go? Oh, it was, it was fantastic. It was overwhelming um it, it long time deserved that that i'm it trying really, to be no, it is. It really you know is. Uh, not trying to give us uh myself and d and jj and eddie and of course mike portnoy played with us and a friend yeah. of ours keith took eddie's place temporarily um but uh you know we're not trying to pat us on the back but we worked hard we yeah. worked nobody very few people realized that we had a 10-year existence you know, through the early 70s, right up until like 82 when we started to make it, wow. playing clubs. No one did us any favors. No one helped us. What? We crawled and scratched every inch that we got. So and, yeah. it, it was it was well-deserving for the for the guys, for, for all of us. And that just goes to show, I'll show you, never give up, right? Just no, keep going no. with what you want never to do. Never let the bastards no. weigh you down. Right. Yes. So, and, and Twisted Sister, yes, well-deserved. Well, thank you. I appreciate uh, it. So. You know, it was. Uh, it took place in a uh, a club called the Canyon Club out in Agora Hills, which is uh like northwest of L.A., about thirty thirty miles or so. Okay. And uh, really beautiful place, great stuff. I have to thank the uh, the promoter Pat, who actually runs the you know the Heavy Metal Hall of Fame. What? He did a great job putting us on, and of course there was all the other people there. I have to thank uh, um, besides Pat and his staff. I have to thank uh, Steve Vai uh-huh. and Mike Portnoy. Uh, they inducted us. They That's actually awesome. got up there and talked about Twisted Sister, and it was it was great. I mean, what an honor, you know. That Steve Vai to, to get up and talk about TS. Right. You know, he had a lot of great things to say. And, of course, Mike Portnoy, who plays with us, you know, yeah. was, uh, took the place of the late, great, incredible Sound of Thunder, A.J. Piro. Yeah, So wow. it was an amazing show. We, we knocked it out of the ballpark. Well, that's we really awesome. Did. Uh, even though the, the band was short, you know, without Eddie, 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 unfortunately, Eddie and his wife had bad COVID. Oh, really? So he couldn't travel. Oh, they're better now. And, yeah. uh, you know, so our good friend Keith played guitar and, and, and did stuff. And, you know, Keith's a great guitar player. And I got, we thank him a million times, but it's not Eddie Ojeda on guitar. Well, of course. You know, of course. And Keith is a great guitar right. player. He's a great friend of ours. And he worked for us too for quite some time. So does this mean to me? More shows coming from Twisted Sister? You know what? Who knows? You know, <laughs> I see that smile. We all, we all, no, I don't know anything as of right now. You know, I mean, JJ and I speak multiple times a day. Right. I haven't talked to him yet today, but, you know, who knows what's going to happen in the future? Right now, we have no plans right. okay. to play at all. None. But I like to say never say never because the last never. time we said never, we actually got back together. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to see it. It was great to play. We played three songs. It's, don't even ask me, it's all over YouTube, just <laughs> YouTube, just put in Twisted Sister, Heavy Metal Hall of Fame, right. 2023, everybody's got videos up there. Yeah. Of course, we professionally recorded it, video and audio, right. and I'll be working on a, on editing the video and the, and the music all together in the next couple of weeks as we go on. That's awesome. And we'll, we'll have it out at some point, but it's all over YouTube. It's yeah, YouTube. I, I saw YouTube. it. I was following you YouTube. guys. Yes. I, I was on Facebook yes. following you. And it was it was awesome. I watched your speech up there. Everyone yeah. had to, it was really touching. And for me, growing up a Twisted Sister fan, you got me through a breakup. I remember. Yes, yeah, so I the remember. The song that. "The yeah. Price" was the one that was my song back in the day. And and it's right. the, the the there's there's all kinds of things from my side. All right, my perspective. Right. You know, and I'm not talking about D's or JJ's or fans or anything. From my perspective, 
the one thing that's been a constant all these years right. is the fact that people always come up to me or always say something and they say, your music got me through something. a rough time in my life, whether it was a breakup, whether it was an illness, right. whether it was mental or physical um, rough times, lose a job, lose a family member, right, right. everything. And they always say that your music got me through a rough time in life. And I can't tell you how good it makes you feel. I'm sure. You know, it. it's just, it makes you feel so good. You know, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, yeah. gambling. When you get out of it and you 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 play the music in the background that you like, right. that you love, and it helps you through. So I always have to say thank you to everybody who's come up to me and said, your music got me through a rough time in life. No, thank it, you. Well, I'm just so. thanking them for, yeah. for thanking me. <laughs> and we're thanking you um, back. <laughs> well, uh, and, I, and, and a big you're welcome. Yeah. Because you know, it gives me great pleasure to hear that. That's awesome. You know, that's stuff, so man. rewarding. It really is so rewarding. And that night, at, at uh, the Canyon Club in Agora Hills in California, walking outside the club and walking through the club, I can't tell you how many people said that to me. Wow. You know? That's uh, incredible. I, I really was the only guy in the band walking around. Um, you know, D walked around a bit. You know, right. JJ did also. Right. And, um, but it was just great to hear that. It really was. And, and getting the reward was amazing. And, you know, it's about freaking time that we got you know, yeah. besides the Long Island Music and, and uh, Entertainment Hall of Fame, right, you know, right. we're in that right. also right out here in Stony Brook. So if you're in the area, go check it out. It's amazing. It's, Absolutely. It's got a massive Twisted Sister display. That's awesome. Yeah. But not, not only that, and you help people through, you know, or some people had hard times, but there's not a stadium in this country that you go in that if your team is coming back, they play one of your songs. Okay. And that's got to be awesome. So if you want to talk about the business side Right. Okay, of of making music. We have I Wanna Rock and We're Not Gonna Take It is licensed more for more things than any other songs right. ever. Wow. We really do. We yeah. we're the kings of licensing. I'm sure. You know, and uh I'm proud of that. Okay. You know, we're all proud of that. And um it yeah, everywhere you go, whether it's you know, City Field or Yankee Stadium or anywhere across the country, yep. you know, uh any any sport, yep. somebody's always playing one of our songs. And uh, you know, it and it it's great because wherever I go, I hear it on the radio. Too. Yeah, that's cool. You know, it, it is cool. It's very cool. You, you know, know, it's what's great is I can you're a great friend of mine. We are good friends, me and you. Are we? Yeah. I mean, I, you don't want to thanks for remind thanks for reminding me. <laughs> we are. We actually but, are. But yes. what's really cool is I, I had to do a delivery. I was up in Connecticut two nights ago and I was sitting in this bar getting some dinner. And it was cool. I was talking, and one of your songs came on. The price came on actually. Oh, the price. And okay. it was just cool. Saying, you know, that's yeah. my buddy up there, you know. And that's Mark Plan. Yeah. It was yeah. a great feel, man. I sure. Tell you. And besides we're not gonna take it and I wanna rock, you know, there's a couple of other songs or oh, a bunch of other songs that people always mention. The price is one. Right. You know, price is a song. It's uh you know, it came around, and when we started doing it, and D started to uh, dedicate it to people, certain right. people that have that are gone or or, or uh, passed away, right. and uh, you know, it, it it really became like a, another, um, just another great song yeah. that Twisted Sister does that people love. It really is, you know, it, it, and D wrote that song, and it comes from the heart. That's a great song. You know, it really is. It's uh, and and like I said, we're not going to take it. I want to rock our. They're classic rock. They're current rock. They're yep. they're everything. It's just movies and TV commercials and everything. Man. And it, right now, Discover Cards using it. Yeah, and, yeah, it's and, cool. Yeah, so you hear it, you hear it on commercials. You hear it everywhere. That's so awesome. I, I, you know, yes, it makes me feel great. I'm glad to hear that, man. That's that's yeah, definitely awesome. Yeah. So now on the other side of Mark Mendoza, the animal. Yes. Rides a motorcycle as well. Yes. What do you ride? Um, <laughs> I have right now. I have four bikes. Four bikes. Yeah, I, I at one point in my life I had twenty two. Wow. Yeah, who needs I twenty two bikes? You know, and that's funny because you got twenty two now. Uh, twenty two now. You're right. You twenty two now. My my own television podcast. Right. Uh, on uh, Area Twenty Two Productions. But anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yes. But yes. Um, I have four motorcycles right now, and probably another four or five in pieces. Wow. You know, I'm always working on something. Right. Always doing it. And it's, <clears throat> excuse me. And it's so, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to explain this, but it comes up more often now than ever before. I'm known worldwide as the bass player and producer of Twisted Sister. Right. And it's so funny that 
when we started playing as TS and way before that, because I started writing in before I was had a license, right, right, you right. know, I was riding, uh, you know, motorcycles around and in cars right, right. at like 14, 15, like everybody does out here yeah. at that time anyway. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was, when, when Twisted Sister really started, when I joined TS, I was the only guy in the band riding a motorcycle. Right. D hadn't been on a motorcycle yet. Wow. But he got offered to um, MC, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Bikers for Babies run yes. up in Connecticut. Okay. So- he said to me, I got to learn how to ride. <laughs> so, you know, we got it. We, we, we got him to ride and I, I taught him how to ride, you know, the police style side by side, okay. you know, cause I'd been through all those classes right, right. and um, make a long story short is he knew that I built cars and motorcycles my whole life. Right. Okay. Um, and most people, when they meet me and we start talking about things are like, do I, you know how to turn a wrench? <laughs> you know how to weld? Right. Well, yeah, I do. Yeah. You know, ah, you must be a beginner. No. No. No, I've actually owned a tow truck company, a body shop, a repair shop, part wow. of a motorcycle business. I was in it. I still have all, most of my equipment and tools. Right. You know, still got three motorcycle lifts, two car lifts. Right. You know, got it all. And I still do work on my stuff. That's cool, man. You know, right down to my regular vehicles that I drive, I do- the oil changes, you know, change out the tires. I mean, I, I do it all, you know? So people are like, no, nah, you, you can't know how to do that. You know? And like you, you have your own business, right? right? You're, you have a, a, a truck, you yep. deliver stuff. Yep. And, um, and, uh, I did, or I had a class A license for many years right. from, it was matter of fact, I got a class A when it was a class one. Well, I mean, that's when I got mine too. Yeah. You know, yep. I'm talking about, I, I got my, took my test in like 19, 77, I think it was, or right, 76. Right, right. I got a class one license because a friend of mine had a trucking company right? and he needed a couple of drivers. And I was like, well, I can't drive full time for you. He goes, whenever you can, you let me know. You know? So I started out driving this beautiful Peterbilt oh, tractor. Nice. I don't know, like once or twice a week, sometimes only two or three times a month. Right. But we would go, I would go to the, um, uh, the, 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 uh, um, the docks right. in, in New Jersey and the train yards, and I'd pick up containers of electronics. Okay. You know, and take it someplace in the Northeast, not far. Right, right. You know, go overnight and come back. So that's what I first started to do. And then I did other things. And then when we toured, you know, it was probably the most unique thing that most people... Now, if we got truck drivers listening, like commercial drivers, you right, know, right. tractor trailer drivers, even local guys, when Twisted Sister would tour... Okay, especially if it was our tour. Right. Okay. What I would do if it's not like a 12 or 14 hour ride and it was one of the truck drivers or, or bus drivers' um, birthday, right. I would say, You're off tonight. And right. we'll go, How do I take off? I said, <laughs> Give me your keys. I'll right. drive you, track the trailer. Right. Okay. You go in the crew bus. Right. Okay. And do whatever you want to do. Just Party make sure that tomorrow night you can drive. <laughs> yeah, drive it again. Or the next time we have to go someplace. Right, right. So if we if we were driving to the next city four or six hours away and we'd all convoy there, right. all the trucks and buses, tractor trailers, um, that he would be in the crew bus partying, hanging out with all the girls and everything. And if we didn't have to play the next night, the party continued. Oh, well, that's cool. And that was my our birthday gift. That's an awesome that, gift. To that drive, awesome gift. Yeah, they awesome. never get. They've never been in. A, all those guys. They've never been in the back of a of a tour bus. Ah, right. You know, never. So they were all hanging out and you know, and not in any condition to drive. You know, but they had a day or two to recover. You made their dreams come true. Absolutely, and That's that was awesome. always a gift. And no one really spoke about it much, <laughs> but I think about it now, and I said, you know, I've done that a whole bunch of times. Yeah, you know? that's cool. Give me your keys. And the other thing I used to do, and we'll get back to motorcycles in a minute. Mm-hmm is when we got to a town, when we started touring with Iron Maiden right. and opening up for them, and right after that, we went on our own headline tours, I would make sure that I was on the insurance rider right. for the truck company and the bus company <laughs> so I could drive the equipment. Right. So a lot of times, these guys, we get to a town. Like when we were, we played um, four nights in a row in the Long Beach Arena, we're opening up for Iron Maiden. Okay. That was part of the tour. Four nights in a row, but we were in Long Beach, California for like six days. Right, right. right? I got to rent a car. 
I take that beautiful black and chromed out Peterbilt there, right? <laughs> and turn it out. into the biggest crew cab pickup truck you've ever had, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. I know, about. Bob so, Taylor. Yeah, exactly. So we would park the trailers at the Coliseum, right. you know, nothing's in them, right, right. you know, and I'd come out and I'd walk out there and jump in the tractor or take it back to the hotel with me. That's awesome. You know, park in the hotel and that's what I used for the, the five days that I was there. That's awesome. I'd bring it back washed. And full of fuel. Yeah. And the driver's like, Let's come back. It's perfectly clean. That's nice, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm you, sure there's a lot of bands that don't have that out there. No, no. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I used to do it all the time. All the time on all the tours. That is yeah. so cool. Take one of the nice that tractors is, and drive it around. That yeah. is so cool. You're driving. Look up at the truck and see Mark Mendoza up there. Well, I'll tell you I'll tell you a funny story again about that, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Right? Even hey. we're motorcycles. Yep. So we're on tour, and I we're in Dayton, Ohio, or or uh, somewhere in Ohio. I just don't remember the city. It's all, uh, it, it, you uh, remember the stuff. They're all great cities. They yeah, really are. The yeah. crowds are amazing. And uh, it wasn't Cleveland though, but I know it was either Dayton or Columbus, Ohio. And we're there. We're actually staying o- the next day because we have like two days, three days to get to the next city. Right, right. So let's just stay overnight, you know? So we do the show. We're back at the hotel, you know? And I hear my room is next to D's. You know, it usually right. is. Right. And I hear him knock on the wall. I go, what's up? He goes, you awake? I said, yeah. He goes, can I come over? Yeah, come on over. So he comes over, right? I come in. I'm just watching TV, hanging out. He goes, man, I, I've got the Joneses for a Dunkin' Donuts coffee <laughs> and a and a regular, I don't know, whatever they call the, the donut without sugar on it. Okay. You know? Yeah, man. Uh, he goes, you got the truck, right? I said, yeah. It, he goes, you know where Dunkin' Donuts is? Yeah. I said, it's down about two miles right, right on this their version of Hempstead Turnpike right, 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 right. Highway. Yeah. Why don't you go with me? He goes, no, man. What am I? Just get in the truck, man. Who's going to think you're in the truck with me? <laughs> exactly. You know, <laughs> I'll tie my hair back, put a Peterbilt hat on. Right, right. And, and, and I'll, I'll jump out and get it. He goes, really? I'd love to get out of the hotel. Because those days he never came out. Right, right. He was like a hermit. I you can know? imagine. And uh, so I did get him in the truck. We pull into the Dunkin' Donuts, wherever we were, right? And behind Dunkin' Donuts, it was attached to this big shopping mall that was closed already right. for the evening. But there had to have been, I don't know, about 30 cars and 30 motorcycles. Everybody's just hanging out. Right. You know, no problems, no nothing. And he sees it and he goes, can you drive the back around there? I said, let me just look and see if it's big enough to get this tractor through and there's no uh, low wires. Right, 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 right. You know that. You don't oh, look for the wires. Oh, yeah. So I did. It was huge. I said, yeah, we could drive through there. He goes, Great. So we start to, and I go, well, let me, let me jump out. Why don't you wait here a second? So I pull up, you know, hit the brake. And he always goes, I love when you pull the brakes because it goes, yeah. <laughs> well, the air brakes, D. So, and he didn't know what it meant, but he does now. <laughs> I explain it to him. So I go, I walk around the parking lot and everybody's looking at me like, this can't be. Because my hair's tied back. Remember well, the back then my yeah. hair was out. Yeah, yeah. And I got a Peterbilt hat on. And I walk up to a bunch of people and they go, you're Mark Mendoza. I said, listen. Yes, I am. I said, D and I will hang out with you guys if you're all cool. Right. If you don't call a thousand people over here, right. we'll take pictures with you, sign autographs. We just like looking at the cars and bikes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So basically, they said, definitely. D comes out. Nobody runs over. We walk around. We talk to people. They open the hoods. They show everything. And we hung out with them for about three hours. Nice. It was we in the morning, like nice. four in the morning by the time we were heading back to the hotel. <laughs> and of course, we had the day off. So we just, you know, sleep. That's late awesome. Or something. So, yeah, we did. And I think that was one of the reasons that that, that stuff, you know, bit D. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to ride a motorcycle. Absolutely. And, have, and we were always, at, even on our club days, he always had a, a nice car. Oh, I'm sure You know, sure he I did. always had a bunch, but he always had a nice car to drive. Not, he'll even, in his own admission, He's not a mechanic. He right. can't really turn a wrench. He can change a tire easily. You know, that he can do. He's not a prissy, man. I can do that too. Well, he's not a prissy. No, He'll no, go no. out and change his yeah, tire. Yeah. And I used to come to my house and change the oil and do all the, the oh. maintenance to whatever car he had. Right, right. And uh, so it, it was a great story. It's great stuff. So Good stuff. getting back to the original part of the story is people are surprised that I have, you know, $100,000 worth of tools and machinery right. and, and, you know, from the starting in the early seventies, right. right through now, I still once in a while see my, uh, my Mac dealer or my snap on dealer. And there's a couple of things I need specialty stuff. And, <laughs> and I knock on the truck cause they know me yeah, yeah. and I can eat this and they're happy. They don't even got to make a stop to see me. <laughs> I find them on the road. So I got to thank my Mac snap-on and my snap on. Yeah, dealer guys. So anyway, stuff. um, getting back to motorcycles, yes. right? So I've built a lot of motorcycles. What do I have now? 
Um, my newest bike, which isn't new, which is what I did a lot of work on, is a 2001. It was a street glide. Right. It's now a full bore FLH. Wow, really? All stock Harley stuff. You know, stock motor, stock transmission, five speed. Right. You know, um, nothing, no hot rod stuff on it. All I do is I love it. It starts every day and I ride it every day. Right, right, I don't right. got about. I don't know, somewhere like 35,000 miles on it. I didn't buy it new. Right, right. I bought it about 10 years ago. Wow. And right. rebuilt it. Yeah. That's sweet. So I also have, um, which I think I discussed on, on Motorcycle Mayhem once before. Yeah. I have a bone stock 1990 Fat Boy. Fat Boy, yep. And most people don't understand what the the unique part of that bike is. And it's, that's really interesting what it Besides is. Besides the gray paint and the yellow circles. Right. Right. It's the only Harley Davidson. Right. I believe it's the only Harley Davidson that came with a not a non black frame. Right. Right. Every other model has a black frame. This came with a gray frame, same color as the paint. That's awesome. As the metal. So I have that bone stock, except for the tires. Wow. The tires. Well, and I only have about you can't expect them to last eight thousand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they dry right. rot. Yeah. But I have about eight thousand miles on a bike. I don't. Awesome. I take it out. Occasionally on a nice day when I've got to ride it very far, right. kills my back. Awesome. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. You're man. getting old. You need something. You know, you. right? Yeah, you need a, yeah, a, yeah. one of those big cruisers now. Yeah, well, that's that's what I have now. That's what my FLH is. That's it's awesome big, stuff, man. And I love having on the show with me, Mark. You know, I, right, how many shows have we done together? So many. A whole bunch, and we'll do a whole bunch more. And you have your show, yeah. Area 22. And area, I've and, got, uh, you know, I've got uh, my show 22 now Twenty-nine. on Area 22 Productions every 7 p.m. New York time. Uh, on Tuesdays, okay. and it's mostly about entertainment. Right. You know, we leave the motorcycles to you, and you guys leave the music to me. <laughs> yep. And sometimes we cross over a little sure, bit, it but it's never a problem because nope. you're always great, and we become great friends like yep. you were talking about. But yep. it, it, it it really is. The, the, the car motorcycle custom stuff for me is, has been a long time. I've been doing it a long, most of my life. It's funny. I remember that time, the late Jim Chinisi. Oh, uh, Jim, the yeah. The first time I met you, you were a guest on his show. Oh, that was funny. And yeah, we were down in the basement of that studio over there. And uh, what was fun- what was unique about that is I showed up at the house, right. never been there before, didn't know what I was getting into. Right. Danny Stanton said, this would be a great show for you. Right. You know, so I, I pull up and I'm a little early. And there's a young guy I know, in his 20s yeah. working on a Dodge 2500 Series Cummins pickup. Oh, right, right. For those of you out there, I'm sure most people know, but a Cummins is not a gas engine. That's it's a diesel, diesel engine, right. right? So I walk over to him and I say hello. And he's like, hey, man, how you doing? And it's kind of cold out. I remember it was probably in yeah, it was December. Cold. Yeah. It wasn't freezing, but it's cold, you know, and he's working on it. In the driveway. Right. And, you know, it's a little breezy. Right, and I'm right. like, I know I'm dressed heavy. And he's attempting to put the um, uh, the injector pump in backwards. Oh. You know, am I the expert? No. <laughs> but I've seen it enough times. So I said to him, pick that up and turn it around 180 degrees. What? He said, why? I said, yeah. because if you look at the fuel lines, they're pointing the wrong way. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so look at the notch and line it up and put it in. Yeah. And just Did you notch it before you took it out? No. That would have helped to put it back in, in, the, right way, in right. the same place. So, oh. Yeah, because he tried starting it, you know, and and the lines, I mean, he, try, he didn't try to start it. It wouldn't start because the lines weren't in the right place. Right, right, right. But he couldn't figure it out. It's like, just, just turn it around. Man. There you go. <laughs> but it was funny because, you know, we, we got Mark Mendoza coming into the studio, you know. We'll think about questions. You know, I started working on a car with the guy. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the show was supposed to be an hour. And we stayed three on hours. The three, three hours. Three hours show. <laughs> we were rolling and yeah, laughing. That's the first time I met you. Yeah, it was You great and time. Jim. Yeah, and uh, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, and you know. God, oh yeah. God bless us all. I mean, I wish he was here. Oh, Jim he would have loved this, right? Yeah, he would have loved this. He would have loved this. Yeah, Jim Chinisi, what yeah. a great guy. What yeah. a, just another tragic loss. Yeah, we really lost. Was. Yeah, but I want to thank you for sitting in with me today. Anytime, yeah. Johnny. Just give me the word, man. I'll you, be here. You got it, man. We got a lot of stuff coming up, me and you, and I'm we looking do. forward to it. We do. So, brother. All right. Have a good day. Yes, you too. Have a good day. What did I say? It doesn't matter. Good, yeah, whatever. Have a good something. Have a good something. All right, Johnny. We're out of here. Bye now. This has been the Motorcycle Mayhem Radio Podcast with Johnny Rizzo. Thanks for listening. Motorcycle Mayhem Radio airs every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live, YouTube, and Twitter. If you'd like to make contact, send an email to Motorcycle Mayhem Radio Show at gmail.com. 
In the meantime, safe riding and keep the rubber on the road.